The last week, our church received a robocall on our church phone. <laughs> and it was from an organization that identified itself as the Faith and Freedom Coalition. And they were calling to find out how many of their free voters' guides we wanted for our church. Well, I googled the Faith and Freedom Coalition, and I discovered that they are an organization that is sourced and funded by one particular political party. And I went on their website and I downloaded that voter's guide, which was by no means impartial. <laughs> and it bothered me that this organization is targeting churches because we have a separation of church and state. This morning as I was getting ready to come here, I had on one of those Sunday morning church shows. And in the, the, as the pastor was talking to this big crowd of people, in the background was a huge video screen showing an image of the American flag. And the pastor was telling the congregation how horrible our president has been. Now you received in your bulletin today an insert that says what churches can and cannot do and say when it comes to politics. There are so many violations of this, not just with the two that I mentioned this morning. In that insert you will see a website address that you can go to to report any instances you see of a pastor or a church that is either opposing a candidate or endorsing a candidate or aligning themselves with one political party or another. That is against the law. Churches are tax free. We are not allowed to do that. In the past, several well-known pastors, famous <coughs> pastors of big churches, People like Pat Robertson and Jerry Falwell, they have had their tax exempt status taken away for a few years, and they had to pay heavy fines for violating that separation of church and state, for violating the law. The United Church of Christ is very clear that we follow this separation of church and state. This button, this campaign that the UCC has, our faith our vote, our voice is not about endorsing a certain political party or candidate or opposing one. What it's about, it's, it's about the importance of your vote, about the importance of your voice, of using your voice and making it heard. There are over one million members of UCC churches in the United States. And so the UCC's goal is to make sure that every single one of its members is registered to vote. Since Tuesday is the deadline to be registered to vote, we, like many UCC churches today, will be having a voter registration drive. This is totally legal, as you will see in that insert that's in your bulletin. However, we are not allowed to have any political discussion while people are being registered to vote. We cannot talk about a party, we cannot talk about a candidate, we cannot issue literature or have a poster that endorses one person or the other. And so today during our potluck at the round table in the back, Dan McGavin and Carol Brown will be registering those of you who are not registered to vote or those of you who need to uh, update your voter information. And I would ask that all of you please refrain from any type of political discussion while you are in the Friendship Hall today. We have a difference of opinion in this room. I know people in this room who are passionate about one candidate, and I also know people in this room who are passionate about another candidate. And that's what's so wonderful about our country, is that all of us have a voice but I also know that there are people in this room who are not passionate about either of the major candidates. And I have heard people in this room say that you are sitting this election out because you have to be passionate 
about the person that you're voting for. Well, I would like to remind you that the 2000 election was decided with just a few hundred votes. Your vote does count. I would also like to remind you that there was a time in this country not very long ago where certain groups of people could not vote, when black people couldn't vote, when women couldn't vote. And around the world today in 2016, there are millions of people who wish that they could vote. They don't have a voice in the country where they live. You do. And that's why I believe that voting, especially in this election, is not just a civic responsibility. I believe it is a moral imperative. Now, I know that during election seasons, many leaders, political leaders, and religious leaders like to prey on people's fears. I don't want to prey on your fear this morning. I want to prey on your love. Our UCC National Officer, Reverend James Moose, said that he believes that voting is an act of love. And the reason that he believes that is it's because it's one of the ways that we can follow Jesus' commandment to love one another and to care for the least of these. Many of you know that UCC has a very rich history of caring for our neighbor. The UCC has fought for social justice, is fighting for economic justice, the UCC marched with civil rights leaders in the 60s, advocated for women's rights in the 70s, and has been supporting LGBT rights for over two decades. The UCC does this not for political reasons. The UCC does this is because we are serious about following the way of Jesus. And what is the way of Jesus? Well, you heard it. In today's gospel, Jesus said, when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was sick, you came to visit me. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. And we hear one of the righteous say, when did we ever do that for you? And Jesus said, well, when you did it for the least of these, you did it for me. And when you didn't do it for them, you didn't do it for me. Jesus' point is very clear. If we want to follow the way of Jesus, we have to stop looking out for our own self-interests and we have to begin to consider the needs of others. Jesus' way of life was about caring for the poor. It was about welcoming the stranger. Jesus' way of life was about humility, not power. It wasn't about being the, the, it was about being a servant, about serving people. Now, Reverend James Muse had a video that he posted on the UCC's website. And in that video, he said, In following Jesus' commandment to love my neighbor, I reach beyond my own self-interests, and I consider the interests of my neighbors and what their needs are. And who is my neighbor? It's the low-income worker who works multiple jobs but still can't make ends meet because pay is inadequate. It's the child whose options in life are limited because he or she is attending a substandard school. My neighbor is the undocumented worker, the Muslim immigrant, the refugee. The decisions we make on election day will impact their lives. So please vote and think beyond your own needs and think about the interests and needs of your neighbors. That is why voting for me is an act of love. So we have in this room today people who are Democrats, we have people who are Republicans, and we have people who are independents. What is it that unites us? Where can we meet? Well, we meet here, physically, 
and met metaphysically we meet here. Douglas UCC, it's our spiritual home, our spiritual family. If you're a member here, if you come here on a regular basis, it's because you support and believe in the mission of this church. That mission is printed in our bulletin each and every Sunday. And it says, we strive for justice and peace in the world. We are a whole earth church, which means we're about supporting the environment. It says that we are an open and affirming church, which means we support the LGBT community. And it says we respect and celebrate people of other faith traditions. So, if you believe in the mission of our church, when you walk into the voting booth, as an educated voter, as someone who's making your own choice, I ask you to consider our church's mission statement. When you walk into the voting booth, consider which political candidate and their party's policies best work for justice and peace, which best support the environment, which best support the LGBT community, which best respect and celebrate people of other faith traditions. It's your choice. You get to make it. But consider the mission of this church if this church is important to you. Consider the mission of the United Church of Christ. Many of you love the banner that we have hanging before this installation, which is from the UCC, and it says, Be the Church. And I know some of you have it on t-shirts and on a bumper sticker, and I have it in a business card. <laughs> but it says, this is what it means to be the church. Protect the environment. Care for the poor. Reject racism. Fight for the powerless. Embrace diversity. So if you are a member of the United Church of Christ, when you walk into the voting booth as an informed voter, Consider for yourself which political candidate and which political party best protects the environment, cares for the poor, rejects racism, <laughs> fights for the powerless, and embraces diversity. And then the other thing that unites us is our Christian faith. In the first reading today, Paul gives us the instructions of what it means to really live a Christian life. And as I reread it, I would like you to consider the political candidates. Paul says, Be humble, gentle, patient with one another, making every effort to keep unity through peace. Do not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Anyone can say that they're Christian. Anyone can hang a cross around their neck. But the Bible tells us what the fruits of the Spirit are. And they are peace, love, joy, kindness, goodness, gentleness, patience, and self-control or temperance. They're in the Bible. So, as an informed voter, as someone, it's your choice, it's your voice. <coughs> when you go to vote, consider which candidate for you best expresses those fruits of the Spirit. Patience, kindness, self-control. You have a choice, you have a voice, you have a vote. It matters. If your faith is important to you, if this church is important to you, then make an informed decision and make your voice heard. Now those fruits of the Spirit that I just named, many of us have not been demonstrating those fruits these past few weeks and months. We have not been patient. We have not been loving. We haven't been controlling ourselves. We haven't been our highest selves. I've seen posts on Facebook from people in this church 
who have said very unkind things about political candidates and their supporters. We're not being our highest selves, I believe, because we are not coming from a place of love. We're coming from a place of fear. There are only two emotions, love and fear. That's it. So if you're not coming from a place of love, you're coming from a place of fear. And many of us are saying, how can this person in my life, how can my family member or friend be voting for this person? I can't look at them the same way. I ask that you see the oneness as best you can, to look at them the way God looks at them. And to remember what it says in the Talmud, the ancient Jewish scripture, it says, we do not see things the way they are, we see things the way we are. And in the epistle this week, I shared a quote from the contemporary <coughs> spiritual teacher whose name is Eknath Eshwaran, and he said, we look at the world through our likes and our dislikes, through our hopes and our fears, through our opinions and judgments. We want everyone to believe as we think they should. Otherwise, we get agitated. But we're here to accept the way they are, even as we work to make the world better. And he goes on to say, a calm mind has great power. It generates calm around it, a field of peace in which anger and fear can subside. By learning to calm the mind, each of us can become an instrument of peace. So I haven't seen a lot of calm minds. I haven't seen a lot of people at peace. I've seen a lot of agitation. And that's why we right now are gripped in fear. You have the power. You have the choice to be a person of peace and calm. Yes, there's a storm going on around us. But you know, in the center of the storm, it's still. So find your center. Find that place of calmness and peace. You can choose. You can choose not to be on social media. You can choose not to watch 24-hour news channels. <laughs> you have a choice. You can choose to disengage from hateful political rhetoric. Don't say, I can't keep my peace because of all these things people are saying. Yes, you can. And your calmness, your peace has tremendous power. But your fear also has power. And if you are a person living in fear right now, then you are affecting the collective consciousness. And our country will cast a vote of fear. We will be voting because we are fearful of our neighbor, rather than voting because we love our neighbor. Now, I am not fearful. I've shared with you before, I think we are living in the most exciting time in human history. And the reason I say that is because in my short lifetime, I have seen civil rights, women's rights, and gay rights. In my short lifetime, I have seen more and more people being afforded rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We are going in the right direction, despite what people are telling you. We are. We are in the flow of the universe. And the only thing that will hinder that flow is if we are caught up in fear. When we are in love, we are in the flow of the universe. When we are in fear, we block it. So tonight is the presidential debate. You may choose for your peace to not watch it. You may choose to go into prayer and meditation during that time. That's great. If you choose to watch it, watch what the political candidates say through the lens of our church's mission statement, through the lens of the UCC's Be the Church banner, through the lens 
of Paul's instructions for Christians. And most importantly, <coughs> through the lens of Jesus' commandment to love one another, especially the least of these. Namaste.